Why should he stay? Whom love doth press to go? What love could press letter from my side? Lysander's love, that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more in gilds the night, than all yon fiery o's in eyes of light? Why seest thou me? Could not this make thee know? The hair, the hate I bear thee, made me leave thee so. You speak as not as you think. It cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have joined all three to fashion this false fort in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, you most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is it all the counsel that we two have shared? The sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, that we have chid the hasty-footed time for parting us? Oh, is it all forgot? At all school days friendship, childhood innocence, we, Hermia, like two artificial gods, have with our needles created both one flower, both on one sampler, sitting on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, our voices and minds had been incorporate. So we grow together like a two a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet a union in partition. Two lovely berries molded on one stem, so with two seeming bodies, but with one heart. Two of the first, like coats in heraldry, do but to one and crowned with one crest. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? It is not friendly, it is not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I, may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, who even but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, rare, precious, celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love, so rich within his soul, and tender me, forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, your consent? What thought I be not so, and grace is you, so hung upon with love, so fortunate, but miserable most, to love unloved. This you should pity rather than despise. I understand now what you mean by this. I do persevere, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport well carried shall be chronicled. If you have any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare you well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Hena Helena, hear my excuse. My life, my love, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent. Sweet, do not scorn her so. She cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee by my life, I do. I swear by that which I will lose for that, for thee, to prove him false, that says, I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it true. Quick, come! Lysander, where do tens all this? Away, you Ethio! No, no, he'll seem to break loose. Take on as you would follow, but yet come not. You are a tame man, go. Hang off, thou cat, thou burr, about thee, let loose, or I'll shake you like a serpent. <sighs> Why are you coming so rude? What change is this, sweet love? I love? Thy love? Out, Toddy Tartar, out! Out, loathed medicine! Out, hated potion! Hence! Do you not jest? <laughs> yes, sooth, and so do you! Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What? Can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh me, what news, my love? Not I, Hermia? Are not you Lysander? I am as fair as I was erewhile. Since night you love me. Since night you left me.
Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid. And earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate he, thee, and love Helena. Oh me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What, you came, you come by night and stole my love's heart from him? Fine, I faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet? Why so? I that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height forth which she had prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in your esteem because I am so low and so dwarfish? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my eyes can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. You perhaps may think, because she is something lower than myself, that I can match her. Lower? Hark again! Hermia, good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia, did ever keep your counsels, never wronged you, save that in love unto Demetrius, told him of your stealth and unto this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. But he hath chid me hence, and threatened me, to strike me, spurn me, nay, kill me too. And now, so you will let me quiet go, to Athens will I bear my folly back, and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and fond I am. Why, get you gone. Who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart, which I leave here behind. What, with Lysander? With Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again? Nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer to flaunt me? Let me come to her. Get you gone, you dwarf, you minimus of Henry Knockgrass maid. You bead, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone. Speak not of Helena. Take not her part. For if thou dost intend never so little of love to her, thou shalt abide by it. Now she holds me not. Now follow if thy dearest to try who is right. Of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee cheek by jowl. You, mistress, all this coil is on for you. Nay, go not back. I will not trust you. I nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed and know not what to say.